Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, where we discuss all sorts of things Germanic heathenry related. My name is Jesse. I am your host. Let's get into it. Well, 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 hello, and welcome back, everyone, to this week's episode of the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast. Good to be back, good to be here to talk a bit about humanity with a special guest. This is a viewer request, um, actually, and, uh, you know, I, I appreciate everyone who's taken the time out of their day to comment and write into the podcast to share their thoughts on things or or ask for recommendations. Your voices are being heard. We are rattling these things along, just just rattling along, man, you know, just getting them done, and I appreciate it. It makes for good conversation. I think it sparks a lot of good dialogue across the interwebs and just across people's, you know, inner circles too. I think that... Uh, or I like to think that the conversations that get shared here and and stuff get uh, expounded upon or added to outside of what even I'm aware of or privy to. So, you know, you guys are awesome. Guys and gals and non-binary folks and everybody that, uh, you know, wants to be involved. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, but yes, today's guest is Sid Ryder. You may recognize him from the inner demon media uh show his he well he's got a couple shows actually maybe more than a couple but he's going to talk more about that when he gets here um but yeah sid's got a got a show every week called uh talking with heathens um he's he's he co-hosts that show papa olifson and him uh do that and they have guests on from time to time and i've been a guest on that show more than once so it seems only fitting to have Sid come and be a guest here on my show. And we're going to talk about, you know, what Sid is doing and um, his, you know, how he's using his social media platforms. And then we're just, you know, we're going to talk about humanity, what that, taking a look at humanity. And you can, you can come up with what you think this is going to be about because um, I sure don't. We're going to ramble on about it, guys, as we do here on this podcast. But before before we get into that, um, I do want to remind everyone that here in just a few days, actually here in just two days, on Saturday, June 24th in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, uh, the tribe that I am a part of, Hurry the Folk, is having a potluck meetup sort of deal. It's a potluck park moot. That was really, really twangy. Um, but yes, it's a park moot, so we're having you know, food and fellowship, and we invite everyone here in the region to come out for an afternoon uh, of that, you know, food and fellowship, it, rain or shine. Um, it's going to be here in Murfreesboro at the General Bragg Trailhead. Um, details for that are down in the d- description and show notes of this podcast. So if you're thinking of something you want to do, it's uh, going to happen in the later half of the day, so it's from 3 p.m. to 8 p.m. That was the time that I was able to book the the pavilion um, that we're going to be at. And it's, uh, again, it's it's myself and my tribesmen and my wife and friends of the tribe. And um, we just want to kind of give the community an opportunity to meet this Germanic heathen tribe that's in Middle Tennessee and uh, see if, you know, friendships can be made and um, see how the tribe can grow. Uh, so I did want to remind everybody about that. Um, and also to be sure to check out the description in the Linktree links. I've added some stuff there to that Linktree, mainly the the Amazon wish list. You know, um, I never come on here to ask for things. I just like to provide people with different opportunities and ways that they can show their support if they're so inclined. Um, so in the Linktree link, there's a, um, a a link to my Amazon wish list. Uh, I do add stuff there somewhat regularly, so. Take a look, see if it's something uh, in there that you would like to send my way. I will 
uh, do short co form content showing my opening of it, I will definitely shout you out. If you have social media uh, that you would like for me to plug um, or a name, or if you just want to re remain anonymous, I will do unboxings um, in short form, you know, so shorts and reels. I will do that here um, on the Midgard, Midgard Musings YouTube channel, Facebook page, and Instagram, um, and, and share it across to my other socials, Twitter. Um, so there's that. And then don't forget, uh, we're closing in on the end of the month of June. If you are wanting to get involved with uh, Patreon and, and become a Scald tier patron on Patreon, you get a once a month, hour long Zoom session with me. Um, but you have to be sure to sign up for that before the end of each month. Um, each, you know, classes are are held on the third uh, Thursdays, I believe it is. It's it's detailed in my Patreon, so just click on that. But it's it's the third Thursdays, I believe, of every month. And if you want to be signed up for July, you need to sign up before July first. So definitely, definitely check that out if uh, you're interested. And check out all the other ways. You know, there's merchandise that you can buy through Spring. All of the the sales, I get a commission off of those. So you get some awesome threads to support the brand and. I get a little monetary kickback from it, so you benefit from it. I benefit from it. Everybody happy. And so check it out. There's, you know, free ways to support. Be sure to like, comment, share, subscribe. Follow me on all my socials. Uh, the more people that see it, the better that this sort of thing becomes because we get more people involved. We get more ears. We get more eyes. We get more engagement. And that, my friends, is what it's all about. So... Um, let's go ahead and uh, get Sid in here to ramble on a bit, hear what he's up to, what his uh, social media platform is all about, and talk about humanity. Let's get into it. Road. All right, folks, we've got Sid Ryder here on the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast. You might recognize him from his show, um, Inner Demon Media. He's got actually a bunch of shows, right, Sid? Uh, I got, that you kind of a bunch, a bunch of things, really, yeah. But uh, you've been on with Papa on your Talking with Heathen, Heathens uh, show every Wednesday now for quite some time. I've been an honored guest there, and I figured, man, it's time to get you over here on on this side of the. Of Thank the you for having me. Yeah, man, yeah, man, thanks for thanks for being available on a such short notice. I'm all you about know. the last minute stuff myself. To be fair, that's my wheelhouse. Is it? Oh Just yeah, I could I off. could spend I could, I got I got two weeks ahead of uh, something scheduled and I'll wait till the night before or sometimes like during the talk with Ethan show I like to change our intro videos out right and I, one I, <laughs> I waited I literally waited to like thirty minutes before the show came on that I forgot I was like oh man I forgot that I didn't have an intro video so I I'm, I work the best when I'm under pressure especially at last minute things even though I got weeks to plan it to get it done. I usually wait to the last minute to do, to do it. Yeah, it's there, there's it's it's kind of exhilarating in a way, isn't it? Well, to like, yeah, well, yeah, it is really. To be fair, yep. Yeah, like you I, got I this idea, it. this plan, and then oh wait, no, we're going off on this way, and and let's see how it goes. You know, it's kind of exciting. That's how that's how it is. I thrive on last minute things and waiting. Yeah, just waiting for the last minute. I thrive on. I love it. I love the pressure that I put on my shoulders when I do it. Maybe that's why I, I wait to the last minute because I enjoy that that yeah. pressure I put on my shoulders. You think it you think it really you think it kind of uh defines your content and the way you present yourself on your shows like that you say that that last minute kind of pressure. You think that that kind of puts you in that headspace to be the host that you that you've become for your shows. I I yeah because I think for me I could I could I could sit here and put on my board like topics for the show, but I never I never do. I could sit here if I wanted to and think of topics for the show over the next two or three months, but I'm one of those type of guys that I'll, sometimes once again I'll wait to the last minute before I decide what the show is going to be about. Just because I want to feel inspired, mm -hmm. I want I want I, if something I'm. If, the universe has a weird way sometimes connecting with me and saying, hey, this is what the message is going to be tonight. I can start the week off with one idea for a show and then right at the last minute, the universe is like, uh, no, you're going to talk about this. Mm. And so I, I never really try to plan ahead because sometimes me planning ahead is it, pointless because there's, I may feel, I might see something or experience something during the week that inspired me. 
And yeah. so I'm going to take that, what I felt, that inspiration that I was feeling, I like to bring that on to the show and try to uh, get people to connect with the, why this inspired, why this has inspired me, what was the, what the experience was like for me and how I got inspired and why, why I, I like, for me, I'm really big about bringing, uh, talking about uh, mental health, mm -hmm. addictions, and overcoming, because I'm, I'm a survivor myself. I, I was an addict for almost a decade and then i got myself clean and i've been now clean for about close to eight years congrats but Good i job. lost my son to it um, i lost my son last year due to overdose and is his a drug addiction so now yeah. it's took a different meaning for me now so a lot of what i do like my posts where i i try to inspire people through my posts with my words that i say and tell people never to give up there's has a deeper meaning for me now because now I'm, I'm, I'm taking what my, me losing my son, that experience and, and bringing it into the public to let the people know that are watching what I do, that if they're, if they're going through something like this, it makes them feel that they're not alone. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's really important for me. That human, oh, yeah, we can tell. The human connection, that, that human, like the title of the show, Humanity, mm -hmm. how to bring humanity into our past. And that's where that's where it really plays in for me. I'm, I'm connecting on the human side of the people that watch what I do and hear what I do on radio shows. I mean, you would look, you would think with the image that I have through inner demon media, like with the demons, and it's kind of dark themed. Yeah. But it, it it totally is the opposite of what inner demon media means. But, release your inner demons is the catch line or, or the catchphrase, yeah, right? Release your inner demons. Yep, that's what that's the catchphrase. Release your inner demons. Uh, we, we're inner demons. We all have them. We just choose not to hide them. Gotcha. So it's like uh, embracing the <laughs> the less than savory parts of ourselves and yeah. uh, leveraging them maybe to achieve the things that we may not be able to achieve otherwise. Maybe. Well, there's there 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 has. To, we, you, you've been doing this for a long time now. You know that there's there's a certain balance you got to have in your life. And you have to kind of embrace both aspects of who you are as an individual. You have, you've grown, you've gone through life and you've grown and you become who you are today, but there's still those things in your, in your past that you've done that we tend to kind of like hide, throw away in our, our, our file cabinet in our brain and mm. just kind of follow it away and put it in the drawer in the back of that drawer and forget, try to forget about it where I feel we should, we should face these things and bring those things into our shadow work basically but I try to make it more, not so much spiritual way of doing it, but more of a human way of touching somebody. And then they'll, then they start seeing the magic side of it. The, the most important thing in magic is us, right? And if they, people start noticing the things that are happening that's good in their life, they feel that joy, they feel that happiness, and they want, they want to start having more and more and more. So we can touch person at a human level it will enhance their, their path, the walk that they're in, in their lives right now. Yeah. And I think that to your point, you know, putting that human element and, and making it something tangible that, you know, sometimes people, I think may get this idea of, of, of spirituality and, and, and others, the, these types of woo woo things, you know, it's, it's, it's something you can't see, feel, touch, taste, smell, you know, none of those physical senses that we all possess, uh, or a lot of us possess in, in various ways, you know, it's not present there with that. But when we, when we uh, put put a face to it, when we when we make it something more of the mundane or the profane, even that uh, becomes relatable, and then we see that magic, as you say, uh, existing within us, and we realize just how much magic is 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 present in the world and how much control we have over things we're really not just out here you know hurling through space at you know mind numbing speeds uh with without any sort of um course or without any sort of direction i mean it, there there's purpose behind things as chaotic as it may seem sometimes and as crazy as it can be there's purpose behind it and connecting with all parts of ourselves, even the darkest and, and most unpleasant parts of ourselves really rounds everything around, rounds it all out, I think, you know. And it's it's a tough thing to, it's tough for people, especially when they, have, when they have to face certain things that they've done in their past. They kind of come out in the open all of a sudden out of nowhere. And here they are, you know, trying to deal with these 
past things that that's happened to him, whether it's trauma, self trauma, or uh, trauma coming from other people, or something that's been done to him that's really bad and it's kind of scarred them for life. They hide, they they run from it, and they and when it comes out into the in their face again, they they just don't like dealing with it. It's tough. It's hard because you have to you're remembering all these things that's happened bad to you. And here's the thing, and I think it's where everybody really kind of gets confused with it all. When it comes to bad things, let's think about it. When it comes to bad things, they they don't happen very often. There's a lot of good things happen more so in your life than you realize. But when those bad things come around and they happen, they stick around because they don't happen that much. So why not spend your time thinking about all the good things that you have? You, say, you know what? I made, I, made, I made a mistake. Okay, big, big fucking deal. I can move on because you know what? Or my, my, something happened bad to you. Maybe you lost a loved one. You can sit there and dwell on it. Or you can take that one bad thing that happened and try to turn it into something positive and start thinking about the, the good things, the good times, the, you know, the times that you spent with them. Once again, we very bad things happen. Sure, they do. Oh, yeah. It's the way we have to think about how these think about how we approach the bad things. They don't happen that fucking much. And that's why they stick in your head for so long because you don't have a bunch of bad things happen. And, and you start missing all the good things in life, the happy moments in life. Well, it's like that old saying goes, you know, uh, bad impressions are the lasting ones. You know, uh, you you have a bad experience that are, you go out to eat, right? Every good restaurant that you go to, you hardly ever hear about the good reviews of restaurants. All you ever hear about is people complaining about the bad experience they had because they had to wait 20 minutes for their Yes. Drink. Now or, think or about whatever. all the thousands yeah. that actually had a good dinner, had great service. But there's no fucking place to put that in there. <laughs> yeah. So I think humans as a, you know, we, we almost have this inherent tendency to when when tragedy strikes or when when negative things happen in our lives, um, it's almost like we're, we're predisposed to just be sucked into that on the long term basis, maybe more so some people more so than others. And and not all negative things are, are measured the same way. Right. I mean, right. let's face it. Like if, if you made a bad decision and you got arrested and you went to jail, that's different than if somebody violated your privacy, raped somebody or something like that. Like there's different levels of and trigger warning. Sorry, I didn't preface that, but like, you know, tragedies and, and, and negative things that happen to people are, are not all measured equally and they're not all the same. And uh, the way that people um, respond is is different too. Some people respond with aggression. Some people become very reclusive and draw inward to the point of. I think that they do solitude. The, I think people go through all the above. I think they go through. Really? I think everybody goes through all the above. They just some of those levels they don't show as much as the next level. You know, if you're grieving, you're you're kind of pulling yourself back so nobody sees that. But when you're angry, you're and you're voicing it, everybody sees it, right? So I think everybody kind of goes through these phases of. Uh, of let, let's say for losing someone you know you, you go through the i miss them and you, the tears the crying and then you go through the next phase of you know angry let's say and you're getting angry yeah and i think key, i think think the key to for me i've been kind of all i've been off and on practice in some form of magic in my life for 25 years <laughs> and i the older i've gotten the more I, I, I've, I've gotten a little bit more of an understanding of other people's paths and whether they're, I, I frankly don't care if you're a Christian. I don't care if you're a Norse pagan. I don't care if you're a Satanist. I, I, I care less. What I look for now in, a, in an individual is who they are. What is their moral code? How are they navigating through life? And you, I want, I want to, I want to see that the, the human side of the person, you you can know all you want and whatever practice that you you that you do, but for me it doesn't make a bit of difference. If if you're walking around cocky, well I know everything I I, I know all this. But that doesn't matter to me either. I want to see the human side of the person. I want to see the who the person is that decided to go down this path and learn all these things. 
that's where I'm at. I, 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 don't, I don't care what, what anybody practices anymore. And I don't care what I practice anymore. I don't, I don't have one certain path anymore. I realize that my magic comes with an end. That it's the human, the human side of me, the emotions, you know, me expressing myself. That, that's for me, it's where the magic's at. All this other stuff is to me, for me, means nothing anymore. It means something, but not at, at the deep level that I've, I, that I've come to in my life now. 25 years of messing with all kinds of different magic practices from witchcraft, the devil worshiping, Satanism. I've, I've, I've explored all of it. And I come to one thing, none of it would have been here if it wasn't for the human person, that person creating it. Yeah, I uh, I saw something the other day. I don't know if you, uh, you know, like Neil deGrasse Tyson, uh, Star, yes. Talk, Star Talk, yeah. I think is, 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 is where he puts a lot of his content and stuff. And I saw something the other day where he, uh, and I don't know how old the interview was, but he interviewed Stephen Hawking. And um, they were talking about... <clears throat> Or he, or he brought up, I don't remember exactly the, the way it was worded, but religion and science were the topic uh, of his question and during the interview. And, um, you know, I think one of the things that Hawking uh, said was that, you know, before science became a, a, a focus or, 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 or something that humans started really learning about, you know, religion, religiosity, right? That was the thing that early humans developed to explain things that were bigger than they are. And now we have more studies and, and, and science that can explain it and sort of, you know, rationalize the things that at a time in history and in, in human history would be considered magical. You know, they still are magical, but again, that's like the science behind it gets explained and, so when it comes to beliefs, religion, spirituality, uh, I'm kind of with you with that, you know, t titles, names of things, you know, how we want to classify ourselves. Well, I'm a, I'm a, uh, you know, continental Germanic pagan. Oh, really? Well, I'm an eclectic druidic witch or I'm a this or a that. I mean, cool, but what does it really matter uh, in the, in the grand scheme of things? You know, how are we connecting with our fellow you can be humans, whoever you, you are. Know? You can be whoever you are, whatever path you want to follow. But if 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 you as a person, as a person that has no morals, oh yeah, if no you're trash, standards. then it doesn't matter if you call yourself the Pope's grandson. You know, that's it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> you're still a you're still a piece of trash. Show me who just your... so happens to be the Pope's grandson. <laughs> show me your soul. So show me who you are as a person. I I I, I don't want. I, and for me, it's kind of sitting back and, and watching what a person does, what, you know, content they put out in public. Or what's their what is their what's their main goal? Are they wanting to help people, inspire people, or are they out there trying to make a buck? Yeah. And I, and I see a lot of people out there that they're trying to make a buck, and I just usually kind of steer away from those type of people. You don't take long to figure out that you know they're they're, they're not. They're not these spiritual gurus that they try to claim to be. They're just out there creating content just to get try to get paid. And you'll see that a lot in the uh, card reader world. You'll, they'll, yes. Well, mediumship, uh, mediums out there tell you, well. Life coaches. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't need nobody to tell me how to run my fucking life. <laughs> <laughs> and so I steer away from those people. I, I You know, I want to make mistakes. Yeah, that's where you learn, you know, and it's 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 part of you know we're talking about and and i just want to give credit to where credit is due because again this the content of this podcast the topic of this podcast comes from a a, a a subscriber viewer follower his name is michael and his specific response to what should we talk about on the random heathen ramblings podcast you know was we should talk about what it means to have humanity you know so we're talking about all these things right now just right off the rip just getting right into the you know digging digging right in well this i love this kind of conversation oh man and you know to have humanity you know some of the things you're talking about you know exposing ourselves and and allowing others to to see a bit inside of us again not to be so revelatory that we're sacrificing our integrity or or doing things that could be potentially harmful because again you open yourself up to a lot when you just Put have, yourself like, out there in general. You'll 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 get a lot of criticism just putting yourself out there. What's this guy about? What's he doing? What's right. he represent? 
But so much of this, you know, I think what you were talking about before made me think of the word empathy. Oh, that's and that is a huge part of what it means to have humanity, I think, you know, realizing that we're not all the same, that there are things that work for some people that don't for others. And just because it doesn't work for for Sid doesn't mean it might not work for Jesse or the next person or this or that. But understanding that everybody is an individual, everybody has their own different ways of doing things and to be empathetic towards people's discovery of themselves, right? You were talking about being inspirational and saying things, you know, you never know what you might say uh, and how it might impact someone's life for good or bad. That's and it. a lot of people just give out, get on these. Um, and it, and it's made so easy nowadays with the easy access to technology to put your, put your face, put your voice, put your persona on a platform. You never know what somebody's going through and the thing that you might say could have a positive impact and then you never know what you might say could could really uh you know have a negative impact we just we don't know and That's to have that my... empathy and to realize that we're all in this together man we're all here at this exact same point in time the chances of you and i existing right now in the same century at the same you know talking like this like the chances of this happening have got to be like in the 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 you know, you, you're probably more likely to get struck by lightning while being it by, eaten by a shark than for stuff <laughs> like this. You know, what I mean, like you think about it from the moment you were conceived, all the the, the millions of sperm that had to get to the egg that well, made that you, a million, baby. You know what I mean? Like you're, you're literally one in a million or millions. And then all, of all the people that we could have, you know, connected with, you know, here, here we are. So it's really when you would wrap your mind about or when you wrap our minds around that and think about the cosmic order of things and just it's it's really not like i said before it's it's not that we're just you know shot out of a cannon just flying around here all willy-nilly like there's there's purpose behind it and to there's put ourselves into that yeah exactly to realize it to recognize it and then to become part of it don't just be like well i guess whatever's it's just whatever you know like man put yourself out there become part of things embrace humanity and see what can happen you're Some, doing stuff with inner demon media that you know uh, if you want to talk a bit about it but it's you know you're getting eyes and ears on talent across the world you know people that may not have heard of things you know you're shedding light on all of that that you know? was one of my main missions i wanted to bring two worlds together when i created inner demon media I, I it was me wanting to bring the pagan community in with the mainstream society so it's an easy way to say it pagan community and the mainstream community the people that don't follow that don't follow a path or not into the spiritual community there's there's everyday people bands stuff like that and I, I you know i've been really blessed as far as that's concerned i've met hundreds and hundreds of of talented musicians become friends with some of the you know, Josie Scott from the saliva I became really good friends with him. And nice. we have, we, we've had, we have conversations. He makes videos for me and com uh, commercial ads for me. Doesn't try, he even sang my wife, happy birthday and sent the video to me. He's a good guy, man. I worked with his sister at a prison one years ago. He's a good dude. He used to come to the prison, um, to do like mission work, you know, um, yeah with his faith but, but he's, 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 he's a, a solid he's, guy he's a christian and we we, we uh, this is the thing for me if you can sh it's about showing people respect mm -hmm. and once again i don't care what you are i don't care if you're a christian or you're a fucking satanist i don't care what you are i want to see you and I, that's i think that was the it was one of those type of things when we became friends it was like a divine timing because he had a son his name was cody his son passed away around the same time my son, Cody, passed away. Wow. And his son died of COVID, where mine, I died of overdose. But as soon as we spoke about our sons, it was a, just an instant instant connection. And we just, we had, we have, we, we realized we have a whole lot of stuff in common and we became friends. I mean, he's invited me over to his house. He's invited us over to his shows. I'm, I mean, I've never gone, but I've, I've been invited. I mean, I don't know what the fuck, what would you do? I mean, I'll be I'll be starstruck the whole fucking time. I mean, honestly. Yeah. You're talking about Josie Scott of Saliva, one of the, my favorite bands in the early 20s, 20, yeah. 20, 2000s. I mean, 
Click Click Boom, Your Disease. I mean, those some of my favorite songs. They were the anthem of the of the early two thousands, man. Like they were right up there with some of the other, like you know, uh, Dope and 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 Static yeah. X. I mean, like they were, you know, they were then, right there then, on that and, level. And then here you are. It's all, you're already in shock and all having this guy that you kind of looked up to in, in music wise. You're having a one-on-one conversation in Facebook Messenger, and you just like you're, you're an awestruck. So I could just about imagine <laughs> going to his house. I'm just like, but you know what, man? That that's where that's where the humanity of things come in. Yeah. Right. You guys relate. You guys connected at a very visceral level. You know what I mean? Uh, not many people in your life, maybe that could connect with you in that way. You know, and here this one, guy that was is like that one in a million shot. You know, that we were talking about earlier. I mean, that's one in a million that that scenario with our sons would have brought us together. That was like divine timing. But, but yeah, I've just been blessed. I really have. And I, I, I couldn't be more. I could be more happier. I mean, to be honest, I mean, I, I if I want to get I, I, when I first started doing it, I couldn't get one single guest to come on to a show. I was like, man, what am I going to I was doing a different at the time. I, I was doing a show called Heathen TV and I, we had a, I had a cast of people that was working around me and they all created their own shows. And then I would get the shows and I would do the editing and putting the shows together. And then I'll do that. We did everything strictly through uh, YouTube. Yeah. I had like seven shows, one, one new show a day. And I would edit all seven of those shows from different people doing their own thing. And so I, I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't feeling it. Maybe because I was just getting burnt out. And so I kind of ended the whole Ethan TV thing. And then I was like, I took about a six month break and I was like, all right, so I want to switch over from the witch pagan community. I want to, I want to kind of go more mainstream. And then I'm thinking to myself, well, how am I going to go about doing this? And so I, I, I said, well, what's my goal? How do I, what, what do I want to present this as? And once I figured that out, then I could start building around that and start get start sending out a message. And, but it took me about a, three, four times trying to get a band to come on. And I finally got one to come on. And once I did that, it just kind of started taking off. I was, I was having bands on three or four times and not a week. Sometimes. I mean, I was just, everybody wanted to be on. And, uh, yeah. Well, I was, I, kind of, I wasn't, it wasn't a conventional show. You know, you get those music uh, band interviews. And it's the same 20 questions, you know, what, how'd you get the name Whereas with me? What's your inspiration? Yeah. I've had, I've had guests pull their pants down, put their balls on a scale and weighed their balls on a scale. <laughs> I've, I've had, I've had music guests come on there and make out with teddy bears. <laughs> I've, I've had a get a music guest come on and uh, try to see how many eggs he can crack over his, uh, his junk. <laughs> <laughs> how many was it? one and he had a, <laughs> it, it, it took him i swear to you it took him four times he he raised his arm down and came down as full as hard as he could on his on his crotch they wasn't Dang. busting so he went to the kitchen <laughs> only thing was busted he was busting his own eggs what the hell man did he freeze the egg or something ahead of time like okay. no you it, it i was shocked that they didn't bust the first time that he said fair yeah yeah so he had to go in the kitchen and grab a, like a, this little small little strainer, like a little egg strainer, and put it into his pants, and then that's how he cracked it and busted <laughs> it. Do you remember who your first band was that you ever had on your show? Let me think here. Damn, man, because I got 275 interviews on YouTube of me interviewing bands. Yeah. So I'm trying to think what the first one was. I want to say King Voodoo. Okay. I I asked I asked a a DJ and well, what happened was a, a, a pro promotion company from UK saw what me and my co-host was doing at the time where the show was called talking with demons. And he, they seen how the, our, our interviews was going. And it, 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 I mean, these shows would be like, literally like anything goes like almost like goes. a, almost like a Howard Stern. Yes. Type of, type that of was thing. my, that was my vision. <laughs> I, I wanted to be like i wanted i wanted to be that's 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 no shit i wanted to be the howard stern of the pagan community oh wow i had i, I had people i had for a while i had people doing hand puppets for me on the show and yeah. I, they'd be like little mascots that would come on the show and I, I would have like a conversation real briefly with them and but I, I was always trying to come up with new over-the-top ideas 
I want I wanted to be different than what everybody else was doing. You know, the, the typical 20 boring questions. I wanted to have fun. And so we would we I made sure that people were laughing and enjoying themselves. And yeah, and I mean, literally that it, it just took off. And I was I'm just so blessed to be able to have so many and so many people accepting my message and what I'm trying to do. And now people are seeing that I'm am, I am a pagan and there is a spiritual side to me so many of these people that didn't realize it are now realizing it and then they're like holy shit this 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 is what this guy this is who this guy is yeah always don't judge a book by its cover always open that book and read them because you never know what you're going to learn about that person and I, I i guess it surprised a lot of people yeah that goes back to kind of like that thing you were talking earlier about you know sharing our souls you know it, being vulnerable and putting ourselves out here in a way that uh may be uncomfortable at first but look at the you know look at the look at the outcome from it you know what i mean look at every show had had a message but for me it was very important for me to connect with an audience on a personal level uh, whether it's they're feeling what i'm feeling or i'm making them laugh you're you're touching a certain part of who they are the human part of them and once you're able to crack that egg open that's when you're able to start putting those messages in of giving people hope or talking about, you know, never giving up, whatever, the, whatever I'm able to slide in, I always slid in some sort of message in, in every show. Cause now they're open to you. They feel like they, they know you in a sense after you, after you have a wild and crazy show and everybody's laughing and having a good time, they feel like they kind of know you and you're able to yeah. more easily get into them and, and give them a message. Oh yeah. It's cause it's relatable, you know? And that's what I like about the, the, the shows that you have with, um, uh, you know, I, I may not watch all of them, but like with Papa Olufsen, the, the talking with heathen show, um, and, and what I've become to do, you know, it's, 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 a, it's so organic. It's very conversational and it's real people talking about real things. And sure, this yeah. is a, this is a heathen podcast and, you know, in, in many and ways, not, I look to the only heathen for him, it's him, it's Papa. And yeah. that's that's the beauty of the show. We're talking with heathens. I mean, I, we all could be our heathens. Let's be be honest. We're all heathens. No matter what path you fucking follow, we all have that heathen side. I mean, you're I, all degenerates. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that that was the big thing when we was kids. You're you're acting like a bunch of heathens. Thank yeah. you, thank right. you. So I'm, I'm I'm doing but with Papa. It was that was a very interesting way that all came about. When I first met Papa. I had an interview with him and I had a couple other co-hosts and I had this show with him. It wasn't a good, it wasn't a great show the, the my other co-hosts were kind of like talking over everybody, which it just wasn't kind of like your first show with me. I, we had another co-host with Papa and I, we had another co-host and it was kind of like, we, we all was getting talked over and had to listen to someone else's experiences. And we're trying to learn about your experiences. That's why I was so eager to get you back on again. But when I met Papa, the show wasn't that great. I'm not. I'm not afraid to say that I have bad shows, and that wasn't a great show. I've had a hand, quite a few bad shows. So have and, I, man. And, and that's just part of it. And I don't let it get to me. I had a bad show. I'll, I'll, I'll make up for it. Mm -hmm. But it was a bad show. Then, like the next day, I get a message from Papa. And I thought, well, this dude ain't gonna never talk to me again. I mean, this was just a shitty fucking. Show. I mean, he was literally. <laughs> He was literally sitting back on his couch with his hands on back on back of his head and just feed up, just chilling. I mean, he didn't have, he didn't hardly really talk at all the whole show, but he, he messaged me the next day and goes, man, I, I went through your YouTube and I watched some of your shows and you, you I, I'm a big fan of saliva and Josie Scott. And there's something about you dude that I just, I, I really like. And he goes, would you ever consider bringing me onto a show, like be a co-host? I was like, what? Oh, I'm, I'm like, what? Hmm. <laughs> Have you not seen my shows, Papa? <laughs> I mean, the, <laughs> you want to be a part of this train wreck? No disrespect, but you no, know what you. <laughs> I, well, I mean, it was it was my my shows at the time weren't spiritual shows; they were just music interviews and uh, having fun, and there wasn't nothing spiritual or anything like that at all. So I was kind of shocked, you know him asking me hey would you I was like well fuck man I'll, yeah i'll bring you on we'll fucking do it and it took me about at this time i, I my, when i first i just lost my son and i brought him in and i was i was mourning really bad at the time so i kind of withdrawed from everybody 
and kind of went kind of went into my own little cave and became a hermit for a little while until I felt like I was heal, healing enough. I mean, in one year, that the last year, and that year I lost my dad in, in January and then turned around in June, had to bury my son. So I was hit double way. I just got over my dad. And then a month or two after I felt like I was feeling better about that, I get hit that my son passed away. So I was like, oh, I was just a hot mess. <clears throat> so it took a few a few shots of what was going to work for talking with heathens. That wasn't our first idea. I think at first it was everyday magic. And then we changed it to the witch's hour. And then yep, I, remember I, that. I was like, I was like, all right, this, this is not still not working. I'm not feeling the title. I'm not feeling us. It needs to be something that, that's, that perks my ears up. And I was like, what about another ear, another version of talking with demons? Let's, let's try talking with heathens. And then we just have a, just an open conversations and that, this would be the show that we can kind of put a message out there or a topic out there people to connect to. And it was, it was kind of rocky at first because we was trying to find our, I mean, his flow. But once we found our flow, it, it, it's just been really, really just really turned out to be a really great show. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I've, I've enjoyed, uh, you know, whenever you, uh, cause you know, you, you put them out on, on multiple platforms. So they, they come across as, as live streams, you know, so you're engaging with your audience, like in real time, which is really cool. And, uh, again, having been on a, as a guest, you know, a couple of times it's, it is, it's, it's, uh, it's an enjoyable experience, not just to be, um, a, a viewer, a subscriber, a, a supporter, but to be part, you know, to participate in it and yeah. see the humanity of everybody, right? Just, that's just that's kind what of... the show is about, is showing the human side of who these people are that, that are practicing like Norse Papa animism and Norse pagan. Everybody knows that's what he is and that's his path. This show kind of pulls a couple of those layers back a little bit and you get to see a different side of Papa, you know, people see him in his posts like now he, and it was, it was a, a bit of a challenge for him to start doing these shows like this. He was, wasn't very he wasn't comfortable with doing them. He didn't know he, he just was really quiet at first and yeah. Break oh. out. I was peeling those layers back on him and I got to start seeing this, this different side of Papa. And, you know, we see what we see on Facebook, but it st I started peeling these layers back and I started seeing another side of Papa. And yeah. that's that's when we started to thrive on our shows. When I actually got to see who who he he is, who he really is. Yeah, I had him on my channel um, years ago, and it was it was like an interview sort of thing. And it was, I think, actually, he came to me and asked if he could interview me on my channel. So he's like, "Would you mind if I like interviewed you?" and you know, you publish it on your channel. I'm like, sure. Why not? Like, cause you know, I'm usually the one talking to people or interviewing them or asking them. So let's, let's kind of flip the script here. Let's, let's reverse the roles. And, um, I remember a, a few of those early times of, of getting him on camera, you know, uh, it's a, it was a totally different version of him then than, than what it is now. He, he's really found himself as, as a, as an online personality in front of a camera. He's yeah, still he Papa. Like he's still, He's still that Appalachia, you know, sing song voice kind of just chill dude. Like he's he's still My that. My favorite moments but... with him is when, when when I'm able to make him like literally bust out laughing. Them are, <laughs> them are my favorite times of the shows when I'm able to crack that nut, yeah, and make him smile or laugh or joke about that because you don't you people don't get to see that side of him unless yeah. they've met him one on one in person or something like that. I'm sure people see that side, but the public doesn't. Oh yeah, and so it's really it's really cool people being able to see this side of who Papa is, and I, I tell you, I love the guy, I really do. We, I, I, I can't, I can't speak more highly of him, really. And he's come a really long, a long way doing this stuff, and yep. he's really, really blossomed into something. He's really blossomed into something special. Yeah, and having gone and seen him, you know, having met him in person, visit visited him and his family uh, several times, and and will continue to do so um it, it it's only it only gets better when you're with him in person you know seeing the stuff that he shares on his socials and then seeing him in front of the camera like yeah those are the layers that get peeled back and you see that but i'm telling you man you sit and have a meal with the man or just smoke a pipe or not even do anything just talk in person um go on hikes just whatever it's it's enriching and it's it it does something for 
for me at least like it does something for for my human self like it it's it's uh it's a human it is it's enriching it's it's, yep. it's it's enriching you know what i mean like you could be in a bad mood and i i can't tell you how many times i've you know gone to him in confidence about certain things because i can trust him with that and i know <laughs> that he's he's he's, he's trustworthy right exactly <laughs> and you feel so much better afterwards like you could feel like an absolute pile of dog shit talking to him you 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 walk away or you leave the conversation and you feel uh, calm and at the, ease yeah and you're not angry no more you're not venting anymore you, you, he really does it's he's, he's a good person to talk to he really is if you get to know him at that level we you know you can confide in him he can confide in you i mean it, it, you come out of the talking with him I, i've had some bad i've had some rough days yeah and i'll go say hey, man what you up to you feel like talking for a minute it's like man i got time for you anytime and that's and true. That's, that's how he is. And that's what I'd love to see, you know, when folks like yourself and and others who I've come connected with through either this podcast or, um, you know, just other ways, you know, over social media and, and establishing meaningful relationships with people and seeing people for who they are and embracing all aspects. Because let's face it, you know, um, the humanity, you know, uh, oh, the humanity, but <laughs> the humanity and, and, and knowing that a friend, you know, somebody that you connect with, you're going to have to deal with them and they're going to have to deal with you when it's not all sunshines and rainbows, That's it. you know, you're going to have to deal with someone when they're being a total ass and then vice versa, you know, they, they're going to have to put up with you and He's that's over. that's that's like the hard part that's the hard part of humanity that i think people because you know look i'm all about positivity and encouraging people and giving people reasons or, or feelings of keep going don't give up like i'm all about that and i know you are too and and then there's also parts of me that are like sometimes you just want to get on here and shake a mother you know what i mean just well, like I'll do that too. beat somebody virtually over the head and be like you need to nut up or shut up because you're being ridiculous or whatever like and get visceral with them and that's that's part of humanity too because it's again it's it's the, the spectrum of human emotions it's the spectrum of the human experience embrace, is, embrace is those those inner demons right those things that are less than savory those things that you would rather suppress or hide or keep concealed you know, because I don't want to look bad or, you know, I don't like that and, and facing it and, and using that well, as the really get worried about their, their image. How is it going to, is it going to harm them? And right. I'm just type of, I'm, I don't, I don't give a fuck. I don't care. <laughs> right. I don't care what you think about me. It's I'm, I'm not, I'm not on this earth to care what you do think about me. I'm, I'm doing what I enjoy. And there'd be times where I'll, I'll get on a damn show and been once or tw one time here with papa once i i, I, I kind of went off on somebody on the show it was in the comments where i was like you know what fuck this i'm gonna say something i remember that show i think i, <laughs> I wasn't on that show but i remember watching i was like you know that that meme you know like here i am like grabbing the popcorn getting ready for <laughs> oh here we go you know it, it takes me I, it takes a bit to get me to that point but when you have enough you have enough and i, I had enough that show and i was like you know what i'm gonna i'm on you know this person was partaking in what I was doing. She was part of some things that I was doing through inner demon media and it just ended and that person couldn't let it go. And she just, it kept going and going and going and going. And I was like, you know what? I've had enough of this. And, and, and yeah. I, I seen that person's face and I guess I'm acceptable of getting triggered too, folks. I got triggered when I seen that name and I went off. Yeah. What do you think about, um, I mean, if you want to talk about it, we're talking about things of, you know, what it means to have humanity and empathy being a really big, really big component to to having humanity and displaying humanity. You know, uh, what do you uh, what do you find helpful with, you know, dealing with people when when they're triggered? You know, maybe it's something you did that triggered them. And now you're having to deal with the the fallout of the the that PTSD that's that, that sets in from the trauma, you know, from well, being for triggered. One, and all. For one of all, for one, you got to have a little, you have to have a little bit of humility and accept that if you was wrong, you was wrong and never be afraid to apologize. If you offend someone or make someone mad, 
also though too is you have a really important key because I, I deal with a lot of people i got i got a chat room with a bunch of people in it so i'm constantly dealing with personalities and so a, a really key for me is understanding once you start understanding the person and the way they they function you try to navigate through that and there, there'll be times where you want to trigger that person and I'll, I'll i'm guilty of it because i i i deal with so many people and they they, they come sometimes they come at me with the same problems it's the same thing over and over and over. It's a vicious mm. cycle that they're not trying to break. I'll I'll be that guy to say, "Hey, look, you know, you, you need to stop doing this." And sometimes they take it well, sometimes they don't. But it's really important to have a little bit of understanding and be honest with people. It may it may hurt, it may upset them, or they might take it and and the eyes may be opened by it. But it's it's really it's you have to be honest. I mean, if you're not honest with people you're working around or working with, it's never going to work out. I, uh, I, I agree with that, but I also see where, um, you have to be tactical about it. Right. I mean, or, or do you, because well, how, how many, how often have you experienced uh, a, a situation where you were brutally honest with someone and the next thing, you know, you're gaslighting or you're a narcissist now. And it's like, hold on, wait a minute. I'm not. I'm just being honest, and you can't handle it. Like, well, have, you, mean, have you have you ever had? Honest, that? Let's be honest. If we're if if we're getting accused of that, we probably are doing that. Really? Be, well, we'll think about it. We 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 probably are doing that just for the simple fact that we 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 see something that's flawed with them. And for me, and I know it sounds bad, and I probably am. You know, I'll be the first to admit that I do gaslight. I guess certain people within my inner circle. Like if you're doing something wrong, I'm going to call you out on it. So in mm -hmm. a sense, that could be gaslighting because right? you're, you're trying to bring them out and be more open and honest about what's going on. So you kind of have to gaslight them a bit. But I'm not a big guy about gaslighting anybody or gatekeeping anything. I like my people, like people that DJ from my radio station. One of their first questions is, "Or what's what can I play? What can I play? How what, what my show?" What, what what can I present my show as? And I'm like, I don't care what you present your show at. I don't. It's your show. Your show. Mm -hmm. Do what you want. You want to cuss a thousand times, cuss two thousand times. I really don't care. I'm not here to tell you how to do your show. All I ask you is to let me know if you're can't make it to a show. Let me know. That way I don't promote it. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, just and have fun and enjoy yourself. You don't need somebody standing over you telling you what to do. It's your fucking show. And we get a lot of that in, in the in the in the pagan community. A lot, that's why I don't I'm not part of a lot of groups because I I I can't stand the gaslighting, I can't stand the gatekeeping. Who the fuck are you to tell me what's right or wrong? Right. Yeah, I just look at it as a way of 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 in a tough it's like a tough love sort of thing. That's the way I've I've always seen it. Because if you know, I remember uh, hearing about gaslighting and and I tried to, you know, do some research because I'm like, what does this even mean? You know, like I know what the two words together mean, but what are you even trying to imply when you gaslight someone? And I've ended up finding out that the 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 term came into into use from an old, I don't know, it was it was a play. And it was a play that was the 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 storyline, I guess, was was something like it was a husband and wife and the the husband would um tell the wife every time like she's like you know you're drinking too much or or whatever like she would point something out let's you know whatever just using that as an example like you're drinking too much or you're not cleaning the house or whatever and um you know his responses was that's ridiculous look at what i do he was invalidating everything that she was saying and also to the point of making her believe that what she was seeing and what she was identifying as an issue really wasn't there like he was contorting and twisting the perception of things to where she got to a point where she believed like well i guess i am wrong you know and and, and i i get it some people really do that some people are so absorbed with themselves that when their faults are brought to light they'll try to make themselves look good and and deflect and tell the other person why it's not that way or justify it i've been guilty of that you know what i mean and I'm sure all but, of us but how much of how much of you know showing someone where they're wrong and why they're wrong and trying to be rational and logical about it is really just what that person needs that tough love but they're just not ready for it or they're they're unwilling to face those 
you'll that face was, that music. That was my that was one of my issues with, with I had an issue kind of similar to that where it, it was a couple of bad shows. So I, I had a I talked with the person about it, like, hey, do you mind not doing this anymore on the show? Because you know, it, it, it's it's kind of embarrassing for not only for what we're doing, but for yourself as well. And they just didn't take it good at all. And I'm, you know, it's not that I was being mean about it. I was, I was being very gentle as I possibly because I considered the person a friend. So I, mm-hmm. I didn't want to come off harsh. I mean, I, I, this person has been to my house. I've broke bread with this person, so I wasn't being mean or or, or rude about it. I was just like, hey, they, I don't care if you do this, but let's just try not to do it on the on. Let's not try to get inebriated during the show. Oh yeah. I mean, we can drink, sure. We can moderate, moderately drink a couple. For me, I, I've had a few shows where I had a few drinks while as I was having the show, but I didn't come out this the show inebriated, and I didn't make myself like I can. Add, well, maybe I did, but not not, <laughs> not, not, not in that kind of way. Right. And you're yeah, right, you know, sometimes they're not ready for it. They just they don't want to hear it. They're on they're on their own path, and to hear something that's the. The, some people just don't like hearing that they, they there's a fault there, and they, oh, I don't think any of us reaction do. is to deny it until they it comes back to them. It's like, all right, I'm not part of this no more. Why am I not part of this anymore? And then you realize, okay, maybe maybe that person's right what they were saying. I just didn't want to hear it at the time. Now that I've had time away from all, I'm hearing it. Makes them makes makes them, makes them want to come back. They miss what they had, and now that they don't have it, yeah. And maybe maybe there's there's really good intentions behind it. You know, I uh, I've talked on on my podcast about shame culture and the difference between shaming and and guilt tripping someone. And from like a heathen perspective, you know, um, everything of course being relevant. You know, you look at ancient societies. Shame culture was a vital part of keeping order and keeping things that you know keeping order in the community keeping order in the society because look if 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 jim bob over here was 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 doing something that was detrimental to the overall community then one of the ways of putting him in check was to shame him about it and to and to bring shame upon him or make him feel shame about it it was corrective action it was tough love it was the thing that worked for the society at the time maybe it's just because we're in this you know era of, Sen- of our sensitive. human existence that sensitive. yes the, the very sensitive and so when i said earlier like being tactical about it like the intention behind what we're trying to do like we're trying to smack some sense into people proverbially or literally smack some sense into people that doesn't really work so well for the majority of people you gotta you gotta you know be a bit more delicate nowadays and, and you can still achieve are. yeah yeah exactly have that understanding have that empathy you can achieve you can probably achieve the same result without coming across so so callous about it, and that's one big thing about myself that I've had to evaluate at my at this point in my life is you know I can be a real jerk sometimes, and it's with the intention of like look quit quit pussyfooting around the subject like damn it face face the music, and even if you don't like it face it I do right toughen up man you know shit or get off the pot like all of these things that were 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 echoes of the way I was brought up and raised. And, uh, you know, projecting that to other people that doesn't work for them or, you know, like for me personally, I don't I don't respond well to when people come at me and tell me you should do this. You have to do that. Don't do this. I'm like, excuse me, you're not my parents. You can't tell me what to do. I'm a grown ass man. Right. All these types of things. But if you approach me in a different way and say, hey, this is what I'm noticing. This is what I'm seeing. Have you considered like a different approach about it? You can each still person, achieve the same thing. Yeah, each you, person you got to treat a little bit differently. Yeah. I don't. I don't come off like when you, we talk like yes. I don't. I don't try to come off like a, a jerk. It's just those moments where you you have people that you've worked with for a year or so, and so you know they you you get more personal. You become more friends, and you're able to navigate you know situations like that a little bit better and yeah. a complete stranger you, you a complete stranger hitting up an inbox asking for help or needing something like that yeah it you really have to show a human side to that those situations you have to be a little bit more sensitive because you don't know what you would say that would trigger them into doing something bad 
if they're in a bad spot in their life, you saying you could say the wrong thing. And I, I I'm really big about I'll, I'll talk to you, but if it becomes too deep, I, I move them to somebody that's that's able to deal with these situations better. Yeah. You know, like dr- drug addiction. I, I push them in a professional help because I'm not I'm not professional. I, I, I'm only talking about my life experiences. And if you can relate to that's great. But if it goes really deep and like, you know, they're suicidal or depressed, you know, I'm going, I'm, of course, I'm going to talk them down. But I'm also going to say, you know, hey, call call a professional. Try to get some help. It's all yeah. right. You, you, it's not embarrassing to do that. We all at some point in our lives need help. Don't yeah. be embarrassed about it. I mean, don't because, you know, I, I, being an addict, I didn't go to like rehab or those 12 steps that type of thing. I didn't, I didn't do all that. I, I, I just quit and I did it probably the hard way. Cause I didn't have no, like, but my wife at the time when we got together, I was starting to wing myself off. So when it was a lot, having her around, encouraging me and helping me get through it, it was, it was a lifesaver for me. But you, you, each case requires something a little bit different. I totally, I totally agree. You have to be tactical with it, of course. Yeah. And, you know, we, we, we experience and we encounter so many different personalities, especially doing the types of things that, you know, we do, meaning, you know, you have a show that you host and I have a podcast and, you know, we have people who we maybe have only talked with a few times wanting to express and talk about their things that they want to talk about on these platforms. You know, you bring guests on, I bring guests on and uh, we're, 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 we're showing the human side to the world. And it's, it's, it's like a, I don't know, man, it's pretty wild to think about what, what, what things like this can accomplish, what things like this can do. Uh, Favorite part of what I do is getting those DMS. Yeah. I'll say you probably get messages all the time. Getting those DMS after a show. And then they're just like spilling their life to you. It's like, man, I know, I know exactly how you feel. I, I lost my son and I, I lost him due to drug. I mean, I, I get, when I get those good shows where that's really kind of giving a positive message out there, the, the greatest joy I can get is getting those confirmation messages from people that, you know, mm-hmm. this show touched me, this show made me feel this way. Thank you for bringing this kind of stuff up. Cause we don't do it enough. And that, that just brings me great joy. That's worth every fucking penny that I spend out doing what I do. Yeah. The, the, ain't the, yeah, likes, the rewards, it ain't right. the shares, yeah. it ain't the views. I don't care how many people watch my show. I, 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 what matters to me the most is that I'm touching somebody in some shape or form. I'm, I'm, I'm touching them in a human level where they're able to feel like once again, like they're not alone in these situations that there's somebody else out there that goes through it and listening to their stories and listen, they're listening to your stories. They're we're connecting at that, that deep human level. And, and that's the, that's the magic of it all is that core, your heart. If you could touch that, there's nothing right. that you can't touch. And that's some powerful, powerful shit. Yeah. You know, and on top of that, you know, you, you're, you have the, the magic of music incorporated into your stuff you know and we i know you've talked about it on your show before i even think i've been a part of it whether watching or or as on a guest you know like the 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 power that music possesses to communicate and speak with people in ways that words cannot that's it and it it, um, music is like for me is like one of the most powerful tools in magic you don't have to be a, a, a pagan you don't have to be a christian music will Get, is, can, can connect with you in so many different more levels than the than the spiritualism or the paganism it's deeper than that you're 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 touching that that heart that core of that human and they're listening to a song and it reminds them of their childhood that's magic mm-hmm. if they're yeah. listening to a song and it, it it starts a new memory that's fucking magic and that's that's where I try to make the connection with magic, paganism, and witchcraft. That magical aspect. People get caught up in the books. People get caught up in witches, especially sometimes get caught up in having all the right magical ingredients. Or and it's not. It's, mm-hmm. it's not none of that. Fuck all you need is a finger in your mouth, and you can get how much all you want to. Believe in yourself, and that's a big thing. If you can believe 
in yourself that you can achieve anything that you want, that's half the fucking battle. Yeah. Yeah, you do. You have to believe it. And you have to experience that, you know, there, there definitely is the experience that, that I think allows that magic to come to life. It's, it's inherent in all of us. It's, it's, it exists at a very primal layer or primal level. And a lot of people haven't dug deep enough or a lot of people haven't, you know, you, you drill deep for oil or you drill deep to, to, to tap a well, you know, a lot of people haven't drilled that deep yet. A lot of people haven't gotten there yet. Well, I mean, everything's about manifesting and that all starts from within starts from your brain and then from your brain out your mouth or on paper and you're presenting into reality. Everything starts and ends with you, the human being. And then if you, if you can tap into your, your human self and moment you're able to tap into yourself, no matter what you take on in life, it's going to amplify it so much more because you're, you're in touch with yourself. You accepted every aspect of who you are. You're, you've technically freed yourself. And from when, when people talk about awake, awoken or being awake, I don't define like normal society calls awake. Uh, it's the moment that you re- that you realize that you've accepted every part of yourself and you're comfortable with it. You've kind of awakened this other person inside of you that you didn't know was there. And then all of a sudden you start believing in yourself. And then you, all of a sudden you start taking on new adventures and you realize that this is what has happened in my life doesn't really define who I am now and what I'm going to be later. And, and it's, 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 it's very eye-opening. For me, it was eye open. That's uh, to get to where I'm at today. I, I had to do a lot of dirty work in my life, a lot of shadow work, a lot of looking at my past and trying to find my flaws. Or why, why are these? Why is this happening to me? Why am I getting so upset about stuff? So I had really mm-hmm. dig and really understand who I was, and then I realized, okay, my problem is, is I'm not accepting everything about myself. Yes, I've been to jail lots of times. Yes, I was an addict. Things that normal people would hide from. I, I, I couldn't hide from it. I had, I had to expose it for what it was and accept it and learn how to move on. Yeah. Unlocking your inner potential, unlocking your true potential. You know, I've, um, I've, I've said this throughout my life. Um, and I, and I believe it to be true. Our minds, we ourselves, I mean, and, and I say our minds because so much of what we are driven by is, is what, ghosts are up in this that's up in up in here it's such a powerful thing because if you think about it the negative things that happen you were talking earlier about if you if you if you're honest and you and you take everything into perspective and you realize the the percentage the amount of negative things that happen vastly uh, you know is it, it's outweighed or it's outnumbered by the positive things that happen in life you know but we focus on the negative things and i've said for a long time that when it comes to mental struggles, and I'm not trying to dismiss or lump everybody into one category, but if if we allow the negativity to take over our mind, that's all we're going to be. That's all we're going to be able to think about. The, the our mind is is powerful enough to switch that off. We can we can focus on the positive things. We can focus on the things that are constructive. We can focus on the things that are good and and overwrite that negativity it doesn't erase it it doesn't make it go away but the power of the mind is so much so that if if you can allow those self-deprecating thoughts or those depressive thoughts to ruin your life then by god you can also turn on that part of yourself to make yourself better and, and and focus on the things that are going to improve your overall quality of life it's there you have that ability it's Absolutely. it's it's literally there you're just not seeking your true potential yet you haven't unlocked that you're not accepting it and you're not you're not coming to terms with it and and it'll it'll eventually catch up with you and until until, and it'll make you deal with it at some point in time it never fails i mean all those little bad you know all those little broken things all those little broken parts in our lives all the things that we've done wrong and we or the mistakes that we made or bad choices that we've made those little broken pieces creates a great big beautiful masterpiece of a life and a person that you are if you learned if you can learn to accept all aspects of your life 
you're creating this masterpiece, this Mona Lisa, so to speak, of, of art. And there's no greater feeling being learning how to be okay with the things that you've done wrong in your life. Are you, are you proud of them? No, I'm not saying I'm proud of them. Right. What I'm saying is I, I've, I accepted them. I, yes. And a lot of the times when we do bad things, we, especially in our twenties, I don't know about you, but for me, in my twenties, everything mm -hmm. I did bad, I blamed it on somebody else. Well, my mom and dad wasn't around or this person put me in a position where I had to do it. No, no, no. Nobody put you, nobody did anything. It's you trying to push problems onto somebody else. The moment you're able to accept responsibility and show accountability, the moment you're able to say, all right, yes, I did this. Can I change it? No. Do, will I do it again? No. Learn how to learn lessons from your mistakes. And once you're able to do that, you're creating this beautiful piece of artwork that is going to inspire a lot of people. It's like this thing. I'm going to, it's, I'm pointing here because it's going to appear in as a, as like a, an in-screen image, but I, I, I shared this earlier today and it was like the timing of it. Just, it says real growth is when you start checking and correcting yourself instead of blaming others, you take power, you take your power back by being responsible for your life. And that's why I said this right here and gave you that finger point that I was like, that's, I that's saw, true. yeah, you saw it. And I'm it's like, true. it, it, it the, the timing of it, you know, and again, it's, we're beautiful disasters. Let's, let's, let's be real, right? Let's embrace the whole aspect. There are things about us that are disastrous and chaotic and, and in that imperfection we are gorgeous That's it. we are we are phenomenal existent you know we, we are we are phenomenal beings of, of nature um there's nothing like us out here that that in, in terms of in this in this area of the you know we're, the we're universe. not perfect so why no. we're trying to be right embrace the imperfections embrace everything that's and, where the and, real growth comes in. That's when you really start, your path really starts to take off is when you completely just give into it all and say, all right, you know, yeah, I've made some mistakes in life. I've hurt a lot of people and I've done bad things, but that doesn't define who I am. It's okay. I made the mistakes. And really focus on trying to do better, right? Knowing That's that it. there are opportunities for us to improve and don't use don't use the negative things to be an excuse as to why you're a jerk or why you're this or that. Like, oh, well, I guess I'm just a piece of trash and that's all I'm ever going to be. Like, I'm not saying just accept the fact that you're, you know, but recognize those things and, and use those things to realize like, hey, you know what? Um, I saw this thing too about, um, and, and this kind of has some relevance to, to the whole thing about how trees grow, right? And you watch a tree and, and how it grows and you, and you, you put your hands all over the trees. You're going to find bumps and you're going to find knots. Those, those knots that are on trees are the result of branches that at one time were there that ended up getting broken off. And so it's kind of like a scar on that tree. It's a memory of a point of that tree's life that something was there and now is no longer. It's still a part of that tree. It's still a part of that body. We've got knots all over us, man. We've got scars. We've got things that have, happen to all of us in our lives that make up this tree that make up this you know sentient being this 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 person this thing and it's nothing to be ashamed of it, it we're all unique in that way you know not there's not one single tree that looks exactly like the other there's not one single human that looks exactly like the other we're all unique we all have our we all have our uh, our knots yeah and you're not going to like it you're not you, you don't have to like it like what you've done wrong you don't have to like it you mm -mm. Uh, matter of fact yeah. i want you to hate it the more you hate it the more likely that you won't do it again do it again yeah yeah right. yeah well we're not we're not saying that you know you should embrace your 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 flaws and not try to repeat them like definitely realize like hey dude don't want to do that again you know I mean, those you, memories you are there like for me reason. to take twenty thousand times to figure it out me too but you know that's not advised yeah do not recommend <laughs> it's like a good a zero zero out of ten would not recommend you know and you, you want you well what what you really want to do is just accept don't have to hide from them it's all part of all those things that's happened in your life is all part of who you are the, what the dna of the person that you are today no you don't have to like the shit shit you can uh, we want you to hate it because hopefully you're growing from it and you won't do it again and you'll you'll you, you start becoming more of a better person and sometimes that takes more than one time to do yeah human the human things the human factor of it all yep
Yeah, we're we're not the best. Uh, a lot of us at at learning from our mistakes the first time. We have yeah. to test it. We have to test. <laughs> You, you have to go, go back to, and do you don't it go again. to jail as many <laughs> toes and fingers that you got without <laughs> learning the lesson the first time pushing like, our luck you know I did, humanity. Of, I mean I, I did a lot of bad things and when i passed just being a kid just being wild you know but yeah i could run from it my whole entire life and ignore it or i face it and accept it and and grow from it and i i choose all right rafiki <laughs> i choose, remember that uh-huh <laughs> i just choose not to, i'm not i just choose not to i rather i rather expose it deal with it embrace it and really embrace it and then move on and that's the point of today you know let's talk about what it means to have humanity michael's comment you know i think that's where what it means to have humanity is recognize and embrace everything about the human existence the good the bad the ugly learn from the bad don't be ashamed of the ugly yeah. celebrate the good you know do do it all and 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 work with your fellow humans work with the people that you've kind of aligned with to build each other up right because that's how we advance that's how we grow that's how we people, become people better. People want to be recognized too. It makes them feel good, and people, you know, well, sure. acknowledge them what they're doing. And I, I encourage everybody: if you see something good out there, and and it warms your heart or fills your heart up, let them know. Mm -hmm. It's important. There, there, there are people out here doing things to try to motivate, and inspire people. And they would love to hear positive. I know I do. I love hearing the positive, and Absolutely. I love hearing the negative too. To be fair. Yeah, yeah. You got to again. It ain't all sunshines and rainbows, you know. So if we're over here, you know, goofing off and, and doing things that are probably not the greatest, then I sure would hope that somebody cares enough to call me out on it. Yo. You know. You, you know. Stop. Need to quit that. Stop it. Stop it. Stop. stop. No. You ever watch uh you ever watch uh it was either Mad TV or or, or the or it might have been Saturday Night Live. It was with um Stuart. Yeah, that, but that um, the, the style, that look that what was, I can do. That was Mad TV, but was, the yeah. it was a it was a Saturday Night Live skit with um, God, what was what was his name? Was it Bob Hot? No, not Bob Hoskins. Um, Bernard. Damn, what was his name? He was like a therapist, and this lady would show up to his office, and uh, he would sit there. Uh, he was the voice of of. Damn it! Why am I from blanking on his name? <laughs> May act like me rescuers down under he was the chubby little mouse he was the voice of that chubby little mouse and the rescuers the disney you know remember the rescuers oh, it was bernard no. and bianca bernard was the fat chubby mouse was it bob was it bob bob hope bob uh bob newhart bob newhart there it is thank I you remember, i remember it now it just just now hit me yeah bob newhart so he had there was a skit where he was like a, a therapist and he and this lady comes in to his office and she's uh you remember that one who he's like the solution was uh i'm gonna give you three words and um well it'll work for pretty much everything and she was going down through this list of, of everything that she was afraid of i'm deathly afraid of you know being alone or or being in a box and so his solution was a uh, just stop it <laughs> she goes well what what he is just stop it <laughs> you don't you don't want to be in a box why would you why would you be afraid of being in a box and he was like it was crass and it was like nowadays people are oh, it's so insensitive but that's literally was the solution for all of her problems was just stop it <laughs> you, you know, know and even till today though that, that that's still it's a pretty sound advice really i mean look is it can it really be that simple are we are we overcomplicating things? Are we thinking that, well, because of this, that thing, and the other that happened in my life, I'm incapable of stopping the feeling this way? Are you really? Are you legitimately incapable of, of correcting yourself? I say not. I think that your mind and everything about you is so powerful that you can you can shift lanes, man. You can you can get off this exit. You can ditch the car entirely, light that bitch on fire, and get a new one. You can, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I'm using metaphors here, but in, in euphemisms, but it's 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 just that it like. If you don't like the way certain things are, and again, this isn't to try to dismiss, you know, real and and uh, you know, real life 
illness and 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 whatnot. Um, I'm not trying to downplay or dismiss any of that. Um, but what I'm saying is that a lot of people, I think, just just really need to stop it. <laughs> well, I mean, they have to. That's it's. I, I know it sounds kind of funny. We're talking about a Saturday night skip, but it, it's really true, though. I mean, if something in your life is going a certain way, you don't like the direction that your life is in, just stop it. Stop going that way. You have the power. You have the control to change your your environment. The things are going in your life. You have complete control of it. If you just allow yourself to say it's okay. Uh, if, uh, if this marriage is hypothetical, let's say this the, a married couple has been miserable for 20 years and they, they're ready to move on, but they're afraid to. Well, you know what? Just do it. If it you got to follow, you got to make yourself happy because if you're not happy, nobody around you is going to be happy. Mm -hmm. And they're going to make everybody around you miserable. I, I can't, I, I got divorced out of a 21 year marriage. Wow. I was married for 21 years and it just, I, I've always wanted to leave her, but I was too afraid. I mean, I got with her when I was 18 and left when I was 41. I didn't, I didn't know anything outside of life. Right. But, but this, and so I'll just, my words were my, my, I still use them today. My two favorite words is fuck it. I'm going to, I'm going to do it or fuck it. I'm not going to do it. Or if something like I, let's say I, accidentally dented in my car and i'll find grocery cart at the store and i'm fuck it I'm like, what, what point is it gonna make I, I i what point is it what point is it to throw a fucking fit you know what fuck it mm -hmm. uh, or you want to try something new in life like for me yeah. it was when i start a podcast i just said you know what fuck it I'm what do you got try. to lose i'm gonna try something yeah. bad's in your life something something happened bad you can either dwell on it or say fuck it you know what all right it has it was bad fuck it i'm gonna move on I think there's a good healthy balance with that too, though, you know, because some, some of what I see is, is especially with like younger generations, they, they, uh, they really don't care these days and, and they'll, they'll take those risks and they'll do things without within really reason. considering when consequences. I, say fuck it, I mean, yeah. that's just within reason. Mentally exactly. In your head. Yeah. You know, don't be afraid to take that leap. Don't be afraid to change, you know, those, those course corrections need to happen. Even when you're sailing, in an open sea, you know, you're going to have things that, that blow you off course. You got to make those course corrections. You got to get back on track. And sometimes, you know, well, I want to go to that set of islands or I want to go off of this road, you know, or I want to try it over here and see what that's like. It's okay. Um, not saying, you know, with reckless abandon, just be all oh, yeah. firing and, you know, firing on all cylinders <laughs> at every single point in time. Like there's, there's moderation, you know what I mean? But to that, there yeah, is? to that, to that extent, you know, for sure. Don't, don't, don't let your fear of the unknown stop you from taking that step into something my that could fuck, potentially change it, your life for the good. My fuck. It's just like, you know, my, more or less than like taking chances, mm. not being afraid to explore different things and try different things out. You know, you fuck it. Give it a try. If it, if it doesn't work, well, there's no, At it least doesn't you try. Work. try, try something different. Don't be afraid to explore new things and new opportunities in your life. Now, sometimes that fuck it may like, you know, you, you, you got a job, another job offer, hypothetically, and it requires you to leave your old job to go start something new. Maybe That's a big sometimes one. You can say, fuck it. You know, I'm going to try something new. You know, or that, you know that's, that's so much of what our, our ancestors did. You know what I mean? Um, taking it back to like a, a heathen view on things, you know, we, we, we hold such in high regard, the, the plight of our ancestors and the things that they did that brought us to where we are now. Like we are the result of their actions. They took the risks. They got on the boats. They ventured off into new and uncharted areas. To we wouldn't be here if it things. wasn't for it. We wouldn't be right. here and where we're at now in society if it wasn't for a bunch of fuckets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, can't argue that. I mean, I mean, you know, they, they, they're trying story. To, if they're trying to like, if they're trying to discover the wheel. And they, they don't get it the first time it's square. Then they try again. And it turns out octagon. They go, oh, wait a minute. Maybe we try being completely circle. There yeah, was a lot of buckets more. in that process to get to the wheel. I <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck it. This one's stupid. Let's try. <laughs> fuck it. This doesn't work. Yeah. <laughs> I bet there was tons of buckets during, during oh, man. throughout mankind. We wouldn't have these inventions yeah. that we have now. You know, 
there was uh, you know hey, that, that that's literally how we got here was was from people do you know literally fucking it <laughs> you know <laughs> it's let's let get get down to the nitty-gritty boys and Thanks, girls mom you know? and dad you know like <laughs> fuck it i did flashbacks that's how you're here son, <laughs> <laughs> you here, son. Those, those those nights when i was a kid being woken up by noises that i d- would rather choose to forget yeah fuck it you know i mean <laughs> Oh man, we've all been there. I think we, we we've all had those horror stories of you know hearing that mac and cheese being made in the next room or something. You know what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> oh, 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 my tongue will throw up in my mouth now. I just had an ungodly image of that. You were a man. We we just went off onto some. We went off into the humanity. We started oh, the humanity. We went into the conceiving part of humanity. <laughs> Hey, look, if you guys wanted a show about humanity, you guys are definitely getting it tonight. And we showed up, didn't we? Yeah, we came, we came here to expose <laughs> all, all humanity. All aspects. The good, the bad, the <laughs> ugly, the smelly, you know, the sweaty. Well, I mean, this has really been a great show because it, it's it, we our conversation hasn't been around a certain path or a belief. We're, we're exposing us. In the sense in this in this conversation that we expose some of our thoughts our, our processes we're showing uh, our human side of what of who we are just understand a bit about what we do there's there's we, we we come from all come from a different cut of cloth we've all had different experiences and we're exposing that today in, a, in this conversation giving everybody an idea of who we are as people and the reason why we do the things that we do absolutely absolutely um and i think with you know consideration of your time and everyone else's time i feel like that's a great point to to venture off into our outro with and before i do i do want to just say real quick um so thank you michael for the comment and and raising this as a topic you You know this is a lot of fun and uh for you Sid, i'd like to say again thanks for being a guest and Thanks Let the people me. know. Yeah, plug anything that you want. If you got a, you know, shows coming up, anything projects that you got going on with Inner Demon Media. Um, you guys can check us out. Pretty much Facebook, find us on Inner Demon Media. We we post bands. I promote bands. We have this. Uh, we do our show talking with healers and myself and Papa. Uh, we got some more new shows coming up as well. You can check us out. Like I said on YouTube as well. Inner Demon Media. Just punch it up here. Punch it in a search bar. Or you can come check us out on Inner Demon Radio. We have various artists. I get on there and DJ myself. And that's a nice, we have a, a chat room. And most of these internet radio stations don't have chat rooms. Fortunately for us, we have a chat room. And about nice. every single show, but every single show, we have gift wars. So it's always fun. So come check us out there as well. But yeah, we, I got, just follow us, Inner Demon Media. That's all, all I have to say. Awesome. I'll be sure to link everything that you've got, all your socials, your radio station down in the description and show notes for people to follow. So for everybody watching and listening, follow Sid on all of his socials. They'll be linked down below or over here or there or wherever it is that you that you find it on the platforms that you listen to this on. So check them out and support them in that way. Um, I hate promoting myself. I'm gonna let you know that, Jesse. I, mean, I, don't, really? I, I don't like doing that. I don't know. I, it's like it's like that necessary housekeeping, you know. Like we got to get it out of the way, you know. Whatever. You got to do, do the it. dishes. Got to fold the laundry, you know. <laughs> you got to do it. Gosh. All right. Just take the trash out. Media, media. You can find me anywhere. Yeah. You can Google me. I think you can Google us now. We're we're like on top of the list of. There's not very Sweet. many people that do inner demon media, but you know me being ballsy and doing it. But we, you can find us on Google. This Google searches. You'll find all the. You'll find the radio station, the Facebook pages, YouTube pages. Fantastic. Pretty simple. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, definitely check them out, folks. And uh, thank you for tuning in today. In terms of all the ways that you can support this podcast and and Midgard Musings brand, you know the link tree link is posted down below. Check it out. See all the things that are that are up there for you to uh to engage with and and be engaging again as i mentioned in the beginning of this podcast all of your comments and people that write in or call in um we do have a hotline it's uh, 615-671-9832 leave a voicemail we'll feature you here as well but you can write in midgard musings tn at gmail.com keep it up keep keep it coming this yeah. is the this is the fuel of, of of great conversations and we love it so thank you all so much for your ongoing and constant support is greatly appreciated until we talk to each other again on the next episode may the gods continue to notice you 
and may your ancestors smile upon you. Ah! <laughs>